being here today. Such a sweet spirit. Such a wonderful job. Great job, great job. Thank you for being here. I love you so much. I don't just say that. Those aren't just words coming out of my mouth. I love each and every one of you. You guys are awesome. Real quickly, let me just say this. Um, that I have, I have 40 t-shirts for anyone who would like to be involved in my little game that I'm going to play. Um, if you don't want to be involved in the game, please don't pick up a t-shirt, okay? Everybody understand that? Okay, you three that understand that, let me say it to everybody else, okay? <laughs> if you don't want to be involved in the game, then don't pick up a t-shirt, okay? They're not free to you unless you want to play my game, okay? Okay, here goes the game. Here goes what we're going to do. I want you to pick up a t-shirt that says, hashtag I am the point. You are the point. You are the reason that Jesus came and gave his life, right? Right? He left heaven for you. Only you. Doesn't matter that I was here. Doesn't matter that anybody else was here. It was all about you, right? You're the point, right? Okay. So, so you're also the point, right? Okay. Whew. I was worried if y'all were going to catch that or not. Second service would be like, what? What is he talking about? The point and the point. I don't get it. Explain that. So here's my game. Here's what you got to do. If you want a t-shirt, they're back there in this back connect room right here. All you have to do is sign up saying you took a t-shirt. There'll be a sign up sheet there saying you took a, a t-shirt. Please do not get your, I didn't get kid sizes. Please do not get your kids t-shirts. Everybody say, okay, Pastor Jamie. Thank you. If I see your kid wearing a t-shirt, I'm going to rip it off of them and go, what are you doing? I'm supposed to have a t-shirt. Okay, I really won't do that. But anyways, okay, so, so here's the game. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a t-shirt. And I want you to take a picture with as many people as possible with your I Am The Point shirt on, okay? You can do it with 8, 10, 12, 15, whatever your whole, 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 whole work. I don't care. Take a picture with as many people as possible with I Am The Point t-shirt. You have your I Am The Point t-shirt. they surrounding you. And you, you put that picture on Facebook and Instagram with the hashtag I Am The Point, okay? Whoever takes a picture with the most people, we have a special prize for them uh, after all 40 of you post your picture, okay? Okay. Okay? Right. Whew. Man. How many kids am I going to see next week with an I Am The Point t-shirt on? <laughs> Listen, I was raised differently. I, I can't stand whenever we have dinners and the first, first one in line are like kids. And I'm like, no, kids get you back in line right now. That's how my mama taught me. Get in the line. Us men, we get the chicken breast. You know, that's how mama taught us, right? Right, men? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there goes hate mail. Y'all are already writing it right now. Y'all are typing it as we speak. That is awesome. I love each of you. That's why I said that before I started talking. <laughs> Today, we're going to continue our series about truth, okay? Last week, we talked about, it's about the truth and nothing else. This, this is truth. You can't make it how you want it to seem. You can't pick and choose. It's not a buffet. This is the truth. This is God's word. It's not subjective to your situation. This is it. This is God's word. This is the truth, right? Everybody remember that last week? Amen. Okay, Woo. here we go. Okay, so this week, we're going to talk about this truth God's Word, taking that from the salvation aspect that we talked about last week, God's Word saving us, to this Word, this being truth, maturing us. Mm. Amen. Mm. Amen. Move on, preacher. Okay. Preacher, if I'd known you was talking about that, I wouldn't have come this week. Okay? I understand. That's why I don't tell you what I'm preaching on. We say a prayer and we... And we, and we Come to Jesus and we say, Lord, forgive us of our sins. We talked about last week, you know, we, we've all sinned. Like Tony said earlier, we, we, we're all disgusting, dirty people. We all needed Jesus. We say this prayer and we get to this place to where we go, whoo, I got it. I made it. I made it. I've, I've said my prayer. Now I'm good. Well, the problem with, with that is that we aren't meant to stay in this, I said a prayer, now I'm good state of mind in our relationship with Jesus. This isn't a resting place of you say a prayer and then you're done. Colossians 1, if you have your Bibles, I'm going to play in Colossians a little bit today. So turn with me to Colossians. Colossians 1, starting at the ninth verse. And it says this, for this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, since we heard the word, right? Right? God's word. This truth. Since the day we heard it, we didn't cease to pray for you. 
and ask that you be filled with knowledge. You get knowledge when you start maturing, right? Filled with knowledge, maturity, and His will, and all wisdom, maturity, and spiritual understanding, maturity, right? 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 Okay. Whew. Maturity, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, increasing in the maturity, right? We prayed for you that you would mature. We prayed for you that in this maturity process that you would walk worthy to the will of God, to the calling of God upon your life. Work, walk worthy to what he has done for you, to the sacrifice that he's given to you, to walk worthy to that. And then we pray that you're going to be fruitful. Maturity brings forth a few things in your life. When you mature, you eventually begin to produce fruit. Because here goes what everybody says here. They sit here in this and they hear the, the word of God matures you and you say, yes, I follow all the rules of God's word. Yes, I'm smart. Yes, I can tell you what John 3.16 says. Yes, I'm good. I got this stuff figured out. I got it under control, pastor. And then Jesus looks at you and he says, show me your fruit. Yes. Huh? Your fruit. That's what maturity does. It brings fruit. Show me your fruit. Right. Where's your fruit? What are you doing for the kingdom of God? What are you doing with, with this knowledge, with this spiritual understanding that's growing in you? What are you doing with this, with this understanding of the will of God in your life? Show me fruit. The truth of God matures us. And in the maturing process, there should be fruit. Amen? Amen. It makes us want to walk worthy of the calling set before us. It makes us desire to be everything that he is, desires for us to be. We read his word. We see his, his calling. We see his commands. We see his thought processes. And it makes us desire to do that. It, it, it makes us desire maturity, desire to produce fruit. And then in Colossians 3... Flip over there, starting at verse 1. It is hot in here. Am I the only one? Is it just these lights on stage? No, Woo, it is hot in here. And a dripping sweat. Maddie says, oh, it feels good. <laughs> Colossians 3, starting at verse 1. If then you were raised with Christ, if then you have been, if, if, if then you, have, like we talked about last week, if then you are no longer yourself, but you're a new creature in Christ Jesus, you've given yourself to him. You've, you've allowed that old dirty man to be crucified. You're now a new man with Christ. If then you've been raised with Christ, if then you are a Christian, if then you are following after him, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on those things above, not on the things of earth for you die. Your life is hidden with Christ in God. Hallelujah. When Jesus, who is our life, who is our life, appears, then you will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death the members that are of this earth, fornication, uncleanliness, passions, evil desires, covetousness, which is idolatry. It is the maturing process. It is understanding that we were raised with Christ. You're no longer in your sin and death. Listen to me, church. It is, it is the, 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 someone laying in a casket all day long and, and, and with their eyes closed just laying here like this. This is what we do as, as Christians. We lay in this casket all day long. We just lay here and we watch our bodies rotten. And it's the, it's, it's, it, it doesn't make sense. Get out of the casket. You're alive. Get up, feed yourself, exercise, do something. Your feet are rotten off if you don't. Do something, get out of the casket. And that's what we do in our spiritual walk with Christ Jesus. You have been raised to life. You are no longer that dead man laying in a casket. And it is insane to watch ourselves rot away while we do nothing. Oh man, it's tough. It's the maturing aspect of God's word. It's the maturing aspect of this truth to understand that whenever God has called you to raise you from the dead, whenever he's created in you a new person, when you call yourself a Christian, then it's stupid 
Sorry, kids. It's stupid to continue acting like you're dead. Get up, be alive, and allow fruit to be produced in your life. Romans 6, 23 for it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages or the payment is death. You deserve death. What, what leads us to, to death is our, is our sins. And when you've been raised with Christ, you're no longer a part of your sins. Then you're no longer a part of that death process. Man, it's time that we set our minds on the things above. Not on the things of this earth. The truth is that this, this truth helps us to see the things that are important or valuable to the kingdom of heaven and to focus on those things. See, if, if there was no truth, if there was no word of God, if there was always a, a subjective truth, then we could take this and we could we could make your own happy place. You know, you know, Happy Gilmore. Go to a happy place. You know, black man with one arm playing the piano, you know? Oh, I got my arm back. Happy look. Nobody watch Happy Gilmore, man. No. I'm sick of quoting movies and nobody knowing what I'm talking about. Go to your happy place. You know, that's, that's, that would be the same subjective truth that we all would have is, is where's your happy place? Whatever's good. Well, think, think on those things. Think on the things that are good. You go to your happy place and it's okay. Whatever's good for you, you think on those things. If, if alligators biting dudes' arms off are, are happy for you, then you go to those places. If not, whatever's happy for you, you go to those places. But here it is. The truth of God tells us what's important to think about and what's important to focus on. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Jesus in Matthew 6 Verse 19 says, don't lay up for yourself treasures on this earth when malls and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroy, where thieves can't break in and steal. For where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. Understand that it's not about this earth. We set our minds on the things that are above, not on the things of this earth. We set our minds on the things that are important, that are valuable to the word of God. We set our minds on those things. Man, you, 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 you died. Verse 3, for you died. And your life is hidden with Christ in God. The truth of this book, this book, the truth, shows us how to kill our fleshly desires and, 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 to, and to die with Christ. This book shows us how to put aside the things that we think are so important to, to kill those things and to walk worthy of the calling that he set before us. Colossians 3 and 8 says, but the very next portion of scripture, put off these things. Anger. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Put off anger. Amen. Right? You just stop there. You may preach here for a little bit. Y'all some angry people. <laughs> Need some joy in your life. Jesus brings joy. That's right. The dead man has anger. Yes. When you start getting angry, you start saying, I'm letting the dead man come back to life. Go on, preacher. Okay. <laughs> Wrath. Go on, preacher. Okay. <laughs> gets better. You know, malice. I mean, that's a good one right there, right? Malice. Blasphemy. Filthy language. Well, preacher, we, we let, we decide, our culture decides what, my, I have a buddy in college. You know, he tries to tell me this. Well, we decide what's filthy language. And I said, well, okay. Well, it's filthy language. Whether we decided it's filthy language or not, you know it's filthy language. Stop saying it. Yeah. Allowing that old man to rise back up in you. Kill that sucker. Right? Yeah. Okay. Blasphemy. Filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another. Since you've put off the old man with his deeds. you put on a new man who is renewed in the knowledge, the maturity, the maturing process, the knowledge of According to the image of him who created him. Amen. Amen. Oh. Amen. Amen. 
You've died. It's no longer you. But now all of a sudden you're hidden in Christ, in the image of Christ, in God. It's no longer you. It's not about you. It's not about what's important to you. You've died. These things that seem so important. Pastor, I like getting mad. I like getting angry. Well, that's okay. It's not you. You don't get to decide what's good for you. That's why we have truth that dictates what's good for us and what is not good for us. And that's why this truth matures us and pulls us into a relationship with Jesus Christ where we remember the knowledge, the maturity process that we were created in His image. And in His image is where we hide. Man, that's good. Yes. They're going to be on the way home today. But man, that's good. <laughs> Verse 5, put to death the members which are on this earth. Fornication. Mm. Our culture needs to hear this right here. Fornication. Pleasing our sexual nature in a way that God never intended our sexual nature to be pleased. Mm. Uncleanness. Mm. Passion. Mm. The selfish desires of this life more intense than your desire for God and His kingdom. Mm. Evil desires. You ever had evil desires? Wanting bad things to happen to other people. Wanting bad things to happen so that you get ahead. How about idolatry? Idolatry putting anything in that number one spot where God Himself deserves to be. Anything. Take steps towards maturity is our desire. It is what the truth desires from us. Listen, I, I love my mom. I have kids myself, right? You know, you, your kids get to an age where when they're young, you, you feed them everything they eat, right? You, you know, whether it's a bottle, whether it's the spoon, you, you feed them everything. Then they get to a place where they begin to feed themselves, right? Mm -hmm. It's a maturing process. I love my mom, but if she called me today and she said, Hey, honey, have you had your bath today? I'm going to come over and give you a bath. <laughs> While I'm there, make sure you go number two so I can wipe you, you know. <laughs> I'm like, Mom, I'm, I've matured past that. I'm, I'm able to wipe number two by myself. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's okay, Mom. I've, I've matured past that. It's, it's the thought process of the 37-year-old man who's in his right mind who lives at home and he's playing video games all day while Mom still does the laundry and still cooks and still cleans for him and he goes outside and he plays with 8-year-olds and, and he's having so much fun and this is his life that he lives. That's not okay. There has to be a maturing process in our life. And the same way it is with us physically, so it should be with us spiritually. Right? Eventually, my kids have to produce fruit in the house. Or daddy is going to get frustrated. Right? I took Caleb's clothes out of the laundry, you know, dried them. I washed them, dried them for him, put them in his clothes basket. And I sit him on his bed and I said, now produce fruit. You've matured enough to where you can fold your clothes and you can put them away. Amen. Now fold your clothes and put them away. Produce fruit. Yes. Wow. Do something to help this family. And here's what God, I'm telling you what he's been speaking in my spirit to a lot of you this week. To myself included. Been a part of this family for a long time. Been fed. Been burped. We've been wiped. Now it's time to start producing fruit. Amen. Time to start maturing to a place. Listen, listen. This is the truth of God. Yes. He understands that you're, we're all sorry, good for nothing. We talked about it last week. And that's where he finds you at. That's okay. But when he finds you there, he 
picks you up and starts the spiritual process as a baby. I'm not talking about those of you that are new to this. I'm not talking about those of you that have been in this for a little while. I'm talking about those of you that are should be mature. That sit here week in and week out and say, amen, amen, hallelujah. And then he steps back and he goes, is it time to be fed again? Is it time to be burped again? Is, is it time for your weekly nourishment? It's time to produce fruit. If you trust this word, if you trust what it says to your life, if this is truth, then it's time to mature to a place to where the family can be impacted, where the kingdom of God can be impacted by the fruit you're producing. Amen? Amen. Second Peter 1. Starting in verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge, maturity, of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. As His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge or the maturity of Him who has called us by glory and virtue, by which we have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promise, that through these things you may be partakers of the divine nature, yes. having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. Verse 5. But also for this very reason, for this very reason of maturity, of growing you up, of escaping this, this, this world, the, the sins of this world, for this, for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, maturity. To your virtue, knowledge, maturity. To your knowledge, self-control, maturity, growing up, right? Mm -hmm. To your self-control, perseverance, maturity, growth. To your perseverance, godliness, maturity, growing up. To your godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love, maturity, growing up, right? For if these things are yours, and they abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Huh? Pastor, God just got me in a weird place right now where there aren't many people in my life that I can, I can really be fruitful with. Well, if these things abound in your life, if you're truly maturing, and you won't be barren nor unfruitful. You won't be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things, <laughs> I love when the Bible says stuff that I really want to say. <laughs> he, who, he who lacks these things is short sighted, <clears throat> selfish, right? Short sighted, you look right here at this moment, in this time, this place. Even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Amen. See, here goes the thought process. If God truly changed you, if his word truly has, has changed your life and taken you from a place to where you deserve to die like we talked about last week, and he takes you and he cleanses you and he saves you, then the only thing that makes sense is maturity. And at the end of maturity comes fruit. And if you get to the end of maturity and you're not producing fruit, maybe you're blind to what God has really done in your life. Wow. Father God, I pray today that as we stand here and as we begin to end this service. That we understand the importance and the value of our life honoring you. You've given us eternal life. 
And the same truth, the same word of God, that the eternal promise is, is, is called to us in, is the same truth that's calling us deeper with you. It's the same truth that says we need to grow and we need to be fruitful. You'll stand with me all over the house. Here goes what I think needs to happen. I think some of us mature Christians, myself included, need to repent to God for our lack of fruit. Yes. Any, any, any people ever done the garden? You know, you see that old, long dead branch. You cut it off, right? right? You see the new bud. You get so excited for the new bud. You're like, yes! This new bud eventually will produce fruit. This long dead one here is just sucking life. And here's what I think we need to do. As a congregation, I think we need to Ask God to forgive us of our lack of production for the family, for the kingdom of God. I think we need to take a step back and look at ourselves and look at the true value of our salvation. Because if salvation was valuable, then you would mature. take a step back and look at the value of our salvation. And then I think after that, I think we need to come into a covenant or a promise with God. To where we say, God, you know what? Maybe I haven't lived up to my, my duties. Maybe I haven't lived up to my responsibility. Maybe I haven't done what you've called me to do, what you've set me apart. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a, I'm not a teacher. I'm not called to do those things. Absolutely, you are. If you've been raised to life with Christ, if He's given you eternal life, then absolutely you are called to produce fruit. Right? Right. Yeah. right? So I say number three, I think we need to come into a place to where we come into covenant or promise with God. So where we say, God, you know what? to produce fruit. And if you'll put people in my way, I'll produce fruit. If you'll give me opportunity, I'll produce fruit. And God, when you don't give me opportunity, I will be eagerly searching for opportunity. Right? Father God, those three aspects are our prayer. Yeah.